Back in September of 2021, I had an idea that I would play through and stream every single Kingdom Hearts game ever. Which is a lot. Not really knowing what I was getting myself into. I didn't know a lot about Kingdom Hearts. I knew it had Disney in it. And I knew people told me that the story was crazy difficult to understand. And had I known what I was getting myself into, I don't know if I would have gone through with this challenge. But in hindsight, I'm very glad that I did this challenge and would now consider myself a Kingdom Hearts fan, eagerly awaiting Kingdom Hearts 4. But while we wait for that one to come out, I promised forever ago that I would do a ranking of every single Kingdom Hearts game. And now with the creation of Brian Hall Plus, I now have a platform to where I can do that. But a couple of things as a reminder just before we get into it. Uh, number one, I have no nostalgic connections to Kingdom Hearts. I tried it once when I was younger. I didn't really understand the gameplay or what it was trying to do, so I was kind of lost and I kind of just dropped it. And another thing, I played every single one of these games one right after another. So I didn't have a lot of time to think and dwell about the story in between each game. I just kind of ran straight into the next one. So I know that's a big thing when it comes to Kingdom Hearts because of how long it takes for every game to come out. So I, I just want to make those things very clear. But with those things out of the way, it's time to begin the ranking. First one on the list is actually a tie. We have Dark Road X and Unchained X. And I think these are the names, but I don't know. In the stream, everyone kept telling me they have a million different names. It's the phone app games. So I didn't actually play these. We just watched the cutscenes because by the time I started playing these, the apps had long been shut down. These were probably my least favorite things to go through in all of the Kingdom Hearts games. They just kind of got really dull for me. I don't want to say these are bad. They're not bad in and of themselves. Just for me, the idea of having to read the entire story with minimal visuals is my least favorite way to play Kingdom Hearts. I didn't really get a lot out of these. I There were a few story beats that I'm like, oh, okay, that was actually pretty cool. But... Man, these just felt so long and so draining. And I mean, weren't these like total six or seven hours? And that's just cutscenes! Not counting how much we would have had to have actually played. Even though I only feel like five minutes of what we watched was actually something big or important to the story. So there was just so much filler. Oh my gosh, it got old real quick. I mean, yeah, I know you gotta establish characters and establish story beats that are going on, but yeah, you really could have cut down on this a lot. So overall, these were just really dull for me. Next up, we have Back Cover X. Now, the main reason this has ended up so low on the list is not that it's bad, but just I cannot really connect with the story right now. I'm sorry, I just can't. I mean, I need to preface, we didn't actually play this, but we just watched the cutscenes again. But also, this is still a new story within the world of Kingdom Hearts. And the way that they like to tell new stories in Kingdom Hearts is that they give you little bits and pieces of the story throughout multiple games. And then eventually you can look back and say, oh, there was this giant overarching story I couldn't really see. So right now, it kind of feels like I'm watching an episode of a show that's in like season five. And I haven't watched seasons one through four. So I'm just watching all this stuff, letting it wash over me going, I don't know who any of these people are. This seems really important. This seems really cool, but I kind of don't know what's going on. So let me watch seasons one through four, and maybe in hindsight, I'll come back and really appreciate this. But for right now, I kind of just look at this going, I see a lot of stuff happening, but I don't know what it means. So for that, it's going to go low on the list because I just had a hard time connecting with it. Next up, we have Chain of Memories. If you guys watched my playthrough of this, you guys know exactly why it's this low on the list. I hate the card system. It's not a bad mechanic in and of itself, but I don't like using it. No, 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 no. Like, I'm glad I pushed myself through it. I'm glad that I actually played Chain of Memories and didn't just watch cutscenes because I, I it is a unique battle system, and I am glad that I tried it, but I will never play this again. <laughs> I would watch the cutscenes for it, but yeah, no, I will not play this game again. And on top of that, this game also has one of my biggest pet peeves in storytelling, which is 
this whole adventure we just went on doesn't matter because it was a dream or you had your memory wiped or anything like that. Any way to invalidate the adventure we just went on, oh, that drives me bonkers. It does get a few points on the fact that some of the stuff we go through does matter in hindsight. And I am glad that I had this as an introduction to the organization as opposed to what I would have had in Kingdom Hearts 2 if I skipped this. But, oh, that still irks me. But I also can't say I totally hated it. I actually did enjoy a lot of the story, which is another reason why I'm mad that it got forgotten. But, you know, for what it is, it's not bad. But, man, this one probably made me the most upset by the end of it. Next up, we have Kingdom Hearts Recoded. Another one I didn't actually play, but we watched the cutscenes. And... Yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of this one for me. It was one of the most forgettable ones. I will admit, I'm not the biggest fan of the Datascape. To me, it's a little confusing, but, you know, not bad, but just kind of one of my least favorite elements of the Kingdom Hearts story. And also, the entire purpose of this story is just to try to remember what they forgot in Chain of Memories, which goes back to the fact the whole thing was forgotten, which was a pet peeve of mine in Chain of Memories. But I did like this one a little bit more because it's actually regaining those memories with the plus there. And I thought Pete was fun in it. That's about all I can remember from this. To me, it was really forgettable. That's all I have to say about it. Moving on. Next one is Melody of Memories. This one, at the time, um, I'd only watched the cutscenes of. Later, I ended up buying the game and playing it a little bit on my own. I haven't finished it, but I do like rhythm games, so... The rhythm part of the game is very fun, and I think that's why this made it up so high. Not that the story in it was bad, there was just very little, because the vast majority of it is uh, recaps of other games. But the rhythm game part was fun, so it went up It went up relatively high. So, um, yeah, I don't really have a lot to say about this one. It just makes me want Kingdom Hearts 4. Next up, surprisingly enough, we're not even halfway through, but Kingdom Hearts 1. I know! I know! I'm sure a lot of people are upset that I put the flagship game this low. But it's not because I dislike this game, it's just because I liked a lot of the other stuff that happened in later games a lot more. Um, but I will never say a bad word about Kingdom Hearts. This is a fantastic game. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was very fun. Just, I saw this as the stepping stone for everything else to jump off from. Like, I had a lot of fun with it. There were some parts that were annoying and frustrating just because, you know, it's an older game. So, it was built like an older game. <laughs> Which, even as someone who is nostalgic for old games, even I'm like, wow, you could have made that a lot easier to understand where I was supposed to go next. Especially in Tarzan's Treehouse and that whole thing. Good night! I had no idea where I was going for like half that level. But, it was a lot of fun. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought it was an amazing first step for this game series. And yeah, it was great. The only reason it's this low is that I just thought other games did better. Kingdom Hearts 1 starting us off strong. Then we come to Kingdom Hearts 358 over two days. Another one of the games that I didn't actually play, but just watched the cutscenes. And this is hands down the best of the games that I only watched the cutscenes for. The story with Xion was just brilliant. I loved it. I, I'm very much a sucker for those kind of stories that will just tug your heartstrings like there's no tomorrow. And I remember just feeling so much for this friendship between Axel and Ro Roxas and Xion. And oh, it just gripped me. I was so ready for it. I'm like, oh, this was fantastic. And it broke my heart. But it's like, it's like that bittersweet moment. Like, ah, oh, it's just, oh. I had so many emotions watching this. And I just, mm. there's something about that bittersweet emotion that if it's in storytelling, I just go ahead over heels for. I loved it. I had so much fun with this. I, I, I want to go watch this again, because I really enjoyed the storytelling here. Next up, we have Kingdom Hearts of Fragmentary Passage. And let me just say, this game is short, but good golly molly did it leave an impact on me. Just, woo! I loved it so much. 
because that whole bittersweet longing emotion that I just talked about in the last game, that's this whole game from beginning to end. You're just watching Aqua by herself, just with her thoughts and her emotions and just, ah, there's just so much there to unwrap. And good golly molly, this solidified Aqua as my favorite character in all of Kingdom Hearts. Like, I already liked her in Birth by Sleep, but here just watching the way that she remembers Terra and Vin and just... Oh, it just did so much. She's an amazing character. I love her. I, I, I love battling as her. I love her story. I just, ah, Aqua's just amazing. So she gets her own game, and of course, I'm just gonna love it. Oh, this was fantastic. The atmosphere was so dreamlike and reflected Aqua's emotions just perfectly. This is, oh my gosh, just, this game was just firing on all cylinders to hit every emotional beat that I wanted it to have, and just fantastic. This one will be a surprise to some people, but next up on the list is Dream Drop Distance. I know a lot of people weren't huge fan of this game, but let me tell you, I loved it. I loved Dream Drop Distance, and it might be for some very biased reasons. If you know, you know. Quasimodo, oh. There's an elephant! I want the elephant! He's gonna be my best friend! But I loved some of the worlds we got to go to. I never thought we would be going to a Hunchback of Notre Dame level. And it was done so well! I loved being in that world and it was fantastic. I loved the Fantasia world. I just loved doing something completely different. Cause remember, I was marathoning all of these Kingdom Hearts games. And as much as I enjoyed them, they kind of felt a little samey-samey. And I'm like, oh yeah, we're going through this again, we're going through that again, we're doing this same thing. But then this game came in and said, you know what? Here's something completely different! And man, I needed it. And they also hit a very soft spot for me with the Dream Eaters. I'm a huge fan of Pokemon, number one, so... Oh, I'm supposed to go around and collect these fun creatures? Heck yeah! Secondly... They fight with you in battle. That's just awesome. And thirdly, you can get an elephant. I can play Kingdom Hearts with an elephant. And he shows up early, so I can have the elephant for most of the game. And yes, I named him Jimmy. And yes, it was awesome. And I had a ball. And I got a T-Rex. How can you be mad when a game gives you an elephant and a T-Rex to play with? I, 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 I admit, this is that's very much a personal bias of mine. But that really did a lot. And I just had the most fun in this one. Like, for those of you guys who watched, y'all remember the frog? <laughs> I couldn't stop laughing about this dang frog. I was not expecting him. He was hilarious. Just this game was off the walls, and I loved it. I needed something during my playthrough that just breathed new life in the whole thing. And this did it in a way I never saw coming. Dream Drop Distance will always have a special place in my heart. I love you. Then we come to what a lot of people say is their favorite, but for me it only reaches number three, Kingdom Hearts 2. This for me is where I started to get Kingdom Hearts. The first game was fun, Chain of Memories wanted to make me throw my controller out a window because I hated the mechanic of the card so much, but then Kingdom Hearts 2 is where the story finally gelled with me. I was totally lost at the beginning, but then when Sora and the gang came back, Oh, we were firing on all cylinders. I was having a ball. Definitely some of my favorite moments in the whole series were here. Just absolutely wonderful. And of course, there is a Lion King level, so it's amazing because of that. It was going to go high on the list no matter what, just because of that reason. I do wish there was more to do on the Lion King level. I kind of just started running around because I didn't want to leave. But it was there, and it was awesome. So, you know, beggars can't be choosers. Kingdom Hearts 2 made it this slow just because... When I hit my emotional highs with Kingdom Hearts 2, it was phenomenal. And then whenever I hit my lows with them, it wasn't the worst, but it was pretty substantial. Like, I will admit, once we went through every single Disney world, and then we would start what I thought was going to be the start of the end of the game, we actually had to go back to all the Disney worlds again. And yeah, let me just tell you, that really took the wind out of my sails. And it really made me say, Oh, really? I mean, yeah, we got to go back to the Pride Lands again, so I was happy for that. But 
Yeah, otherwise, it just really felt forced. I really didn't want to go back there. I really just wanted to continue on with the story, and it felt like, you know, the game was trying to artificially pad itself out when it didn't need to, in my opinion. But all that being said, the game is still phenomenal. I definitely want to play it again. And yeah, Kingdom Hearts 2, fantastic. Next up, we have Birth by Sleep. I love Birth by Sleep. It was just not what I saw coming. It was a great story. I really connected with all the characters. I connected with Terra. I connected with Ven. I connected with Aqua. I really connected with Aqua. Like I said, she's like one of my favorite characters now. Just, I love this world. I loved their whole dynamic together. I loved the way that they worked with each other. I loved the way that their relationship and their friendship started to kind of have a lot of cracks in it. I don't want to go too far with this because I don't want spoilers for anybody, but it was just, oh, oh, chef's kiss. I loved it. I loved the battle style. I loved the mechanics of everything. I love how you had to play through all three characters. I love how this explains an entire giant story like this. Just, ah, I loved this game so much because kind of like with Dream Drop Distance, it was just different and it was unique and they did so much with it and Finn can ride around on a ball of yarn. And that in and of itself means that it has made it at least into the top five. Just, ah! Oh, y'all. This is still phenomenal. I loved it. Birth by sleep. Just two thumbs up. Oh, oh boy. All right, uh, now we get to the more controversial part of the list. Uh, um, the fact that I put Kingdom Hearts 3 as my favorite game. Hold on! Let me explain! I know a lot of people hate this game, and I fully acknowledge and respect that, and I get it. If I had waited almost 10 years for this game from Kingdom Hearts 2, and it delivered this, I might be disappointed too. But as somebody who marathoned this and just went straight from one game to the next, I gotta admit, I loved the dog out of this game. Number one, I just loved, loved the combat. It was, it reminded me a lot of the gameplay that I loved in Birth by Sleep, but had been amplified with even more great stuff, and I just adored that. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that I loved every second of Kingdom Hearts 3, but I feel very similarly to Kingdom Hearts 3 that I do about Avengers Endgame, where Avengers Endgame is probably my favorite of the Avengers movies, but really only for one scene. And y'all know exactly what scene that is. I will admit, I wasn't getting as much into the first, like, two hours of Endgame. What I remember most was that big, epic moment. And that one epic moment was probably my highest high in all of watching the MCU. And I'd have to say the same thing. The big moment in Kingdom Hearts 3, where we had all these storylines wrapping up, Having these big emotional moments really made the entire experience of Kingdom Hearts just solidify with me emotionally. And although I did love the gameplay, I did love going to the new worlds, that was the moment. That was what made me love Kingdom Hearts 3. The pure joy, elation, tragedy, bittersweet moment. My emotions were running haywire through that last giant scene. And if a movie or a show or a game can make me feel that strongly, it wins. I love a game that can make me laugh, can make me cry with joy and cry of sadness all at the same time. And I felt like that big moment did that for me. And so it's really that main reason that this has come to number one. If I go back and play it, will I love it as much because I've already seen it? I don't know. I'd have to go do that. I've still only played through everything once. But man, that moment was just so amazing to me that it made the whole series. So with that, that brings us to the end of the ranking. This whole journey took me over a year to complete. We ended it in October of 2022 took us 91 streams to finish everything and man 
let me just say it was an incredible journey and I'm so glad that I went on it and I want to thank all of you guys who came along for the ride with me. Throughout this whole journey, I didn't expect to fall in love with Kingdom Hearts the way that I did. I thought it would very much just be like, a, oh, these are kind of fun, we move on. I wasn't expecting the emotional roller coaster that I went on. I was not expecting to be as engaged with the characters that weren't Disney related. And I am very, very happy that I went on this journey. So. Yeah, here's cheers to more Kingdom Hearts games. I can't wait to see more. I'd love to hear your thoughts. What were your favorites? Did you agree? Did you disagree? But keep it civil, y'all. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and make sure you subscribe. And also, don't forget to check out the live streams here on this channel. We did all of these games live streamed, and who knows? We might pick a new series to do that with. All right, and I'll see you guys later. Bye!